The expectancy theory is a commonly used uh, management theory for explaining why people engage in certain behaviors when they have a series of alternatives available to them. It was developed by Victor Vroom in 1964 and essentially stated that the expectancy was a sum of what we call a motivational force. Uh, and the motivational force was equals to the expectancy by instrumentality by what's known as valence. Now, the motivational force is the extent to which someone is likely to engage in a certain course of action. We as human beings have a number of different alternatives to engage in in terms of our behavior. And so, especially in a workplace setting, wouldn't it be valuable to be able to determine who or what person was likely to engage in a certain behavior given certain situations that were present? Uh, so there are a few different things that we have to consider with regards to the extent that someone would engage in a certain behavior. Certain things have to be present would, that would increase someone's motivational force. And so as someone's motivational force increases, the likelihood that they would engage in a certain course of action increases as well. Now, the first component to expectancy theory is, of course, expectancy. And expectancy is the belief that an increase in my effort will result in an increase in performance. Okay. So let me give you an example. If you are studying for a particular exam, uh, the only reason that you would study for an exam is because you believed that increasing the amount of time that you studied would increase the end result, which is the score on your actual exam. If I were to tell you that no matter how many hours that you spent trying to study for an exam, if it would not matter, then you would not have expectancy. You wouldn't have the belief that if you studied harder or studied more, there would be a certain outcome that would be achieved. There would be an increase in performance. And that really has to be present. Uh, you can probably imagine in any type of work setting, uh, regardless of, of what it might be, if you ever felt that trying harder isn't going to do anything, if you're not very, very motivated to engage in a certain behavior. And so it's important, especially in an organizational setting, for there to be an established linkage between an increase in effort and higher performance there. Now, simply because expectancy is present does not mean that we have necessarily a great motivational force. We also have to consider what's referred to as instrumentality. And instrumentality, very basically, is the belief that an increase in performance will lead to certain outcomes. Okay? So sticking with the example I gave you before, uh, if you believed that obviously you would increase the amount of time that you study, you increase your effort, you would increase your performance. But is it a certain outcome that you wish to achieve? Not only are you increasing your performance, but you have to consider where do you want to be. So a, g a good example would be if you wanted to get an A in the class, if that was kind of the outcome you were looking for, if you studied more, could you achieve that? Uh, not only could, if you studied more, could you get a better grade, because that's obviously there's a, a number of different spectrums that you could essentially lie on, uh, but are you going to, is it going to lead you to a specific outcome? And that's very, very important, because once again, if you don't believe the increase in effort is going to lead to the desirable outcome, maybe receiving an A on the exam, then you're not going to gauge in that behavior. And we all have a number of different alternatives, and so obviously we want to put our effort into things that are going to uh, obviously be successful or provide the most results. Now the last component of expectancy theory is what we refer to as valence. And valence is the extent to which that outcome is desirable. Okay? If achieving an A on an exam was not desirable for you, if you didn't care, then you probably won't put forth the effort in studying, even if you felt like studying harder or studying more would result in increased performance, which is expectancy. And if you believed you can receive a certain outcome, meaning an A, and if that A was not desirable, then you would not have a significant enough motivational force, according to expectancy theory, to actually engage in the behavior. So when you look at this theory, you know, a couple things come to mind in terms of just the importance in an organizational setting. Uh, the first of which, it's very important to have desirable outcomes. Okay? Uh, you look at it from, an, from a company standpoint and having rewards 
that are desirable by employees or desired by employees is very important if they're going to put forth the effort. Because even if people think, well, if I put more hours in on my job, of course I can do better when it comes to my performance evaluation. And of course I think I can get an exceeds on that valuation. But is there a desirable outcome? Right? Is the, the bonus or the raise, is that enough to make me expend all this additional energy <clears throat> associated with increasing my performance? And if there isn't that linkage, if it's not present, then you have people who are fully capable of performing in an organization, but they don't necessarily have the motivation necessary to do so because that last piece is present. Okay. And usually what this involves is organizations needing to tailor their rewards to the desires of employees. You know, there isn't necessarily a cookie cutter reward system that is applicable to everyone, right? What one person finds desirable, another person may not. Some people, a monetary reward could be enough to get them to achieve higher performance objectives. For some, they don't really care about money. That's not important to them or as important to them. Maybe it's additional time off for spending time with family. And so it's important for organizations to have an open dialogue with employees in determining what it is that's important because simply choosing one reward and applying it to everyone is going to run into this issue because although expectancy and instrumentality may be present, you also have to consider whether or not balance is present.